Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. I'm Yamesh Gupta. Today we are going to talk about promises. We are basically going to look at some fundamentals when it comes to promises that people who are starting out with promises can, you know, use these and uh, improve their day to day dev work. So let's get started. In the first example, uh, we have two functions here. Uh, first function that is in this we are resolving and returning a value and a second function that's taking value as input and adding one and returning it resolving the promise so on line number 11 we call the first function we get the output from the first function we pass that to the second function in the second function we are getting the output of the second function on line number 13 and we are just printing it out so if i run this code now then we are getting the output as two so the concept here is that a lot of people feel that you need to you know return a promise from every function so that uh, the then chain can be maintained that uh, we are returning a promise for first from first function so there is a then we return a promise from the second function so there is a then on line number 13 but that's not entirely true so if i want to you know i can just simply return value dot one and if i run this code now then also we are getting the same output the two this is so you can understand it like that so the basic concept here is that from the then callback the callback we are passing to then we don't have to return an explicit promise from the function we could but it's not necessary because uh, in the most layman language it is more like then wrapped promise callback and we are calling so basically the callback we provide to then is wrapped inside the promise and it is this uh, promise wrapped promise is resolved with the output of the callback function so if we are returning value dot plus one that act as an input for wrapped promise and when it is resolved we get that output in the second then so uh, to showcase that if i return nothing from here let's say and if i run now then the output is undefined the value 2 is undefined because from second function we are not returning any value and so the wrapped promise is resolved with undefined and so we are getting undefined also you now you must be thinking that if we can return directly return a value from here maybe we could we could do the same from the first function so let's say if I return one from here and if I run the code, then it breaks it. It is throwing an error that force dot then is not a function because from the very first function, the pro there is no promise chain. We have to start the promise chain. So that's why we have to return a promise from here. So, but from the consecutive callbacks, the, it's not necessary to return a promise. So the second example here is that let's say we have a, a function first and we are calling the first function the output of the first function we are basically printing it and if there is an error then we are catching uh, that error and printing it okay so now I'll explain so but the thing which confuses people here is that let's say if you throw if there is an uh, you know error being thrown inside the first function so the understanding here is that uh, any error inside thrown a function where there is promise involved then it will go to catch block so if i run as of now the understanding here is that error caught so it should go into the catch block and it should print error caught and the error message okay i'm an error so but if i run this now we see that this is an uncaught error we it, it never goes to the catch block let me explain it more uh, let's say let's make it more clear I am catch block and uh, if I run this so the the control is never going to the catch block why is that so you have to understand that if there is an error being thrown inside the prom in this function the promise chaining the promise starts from the line number five so this uh, anything above that is a is synchronous code and catch block only catches error that are thrown as part of the promise chain or you know uh, the async errors you can say this is the equivalent of this could be that let's say uh, we have some variable uh, number here and we assign some value then uh, 
we do some computation and inside that computation we number one and uh, now we pass this maybe resolve this this value so basically uh, and if we run this now so this this should throw an error and if we run this now then again it's an error it's it's not going to the catch block uh, the error message might be misleading here but it's not going to the catch block that's the main concept here so uh, the thing here to understand is that from where the promise chain is started that from line number 10 above this everything is synchronous code and if there is an error being thrown from here maybe it's a runtime error exact to be exact then it is it will never go to catch block but let's say if i remove this and let's say we have a second function and inside that function we throw the same error okay i am an error and uh, in this we have we call the second function and we run the code now then error is caught so the thing to understand here is that uh, if an error is being thrown be it promise dot reject be it an error a runtime error and that is in part of the promise chain then it will bubble up to the nearest catch block but if it is the error is thrown outside the promise chain from line number four to nine because our promise chaining is starting from line number 10 then any error occurred here will not go to catch uh, to the catch block so the next one is try catch with promises so we work with the uh, promise api we work with the sync await so uh, let's say we have a function first function here inside that function we are returning the second function uh, inside the second function we are basically rejecting a promise with a message and uh, if there is an error we have a try catch block to print the try catch and the error and if it's uh, successfully resolved then we go to the then block on line here line number 16 and if there is an error uh, it bubbles up then we have a main catch block here at the last so if i run this code as it is what do you think should be the output so if we reject a promise from line number phone then should it uh, go to line number 11 or should it go to uh, line number 18 what do you think so let's run this and see so right now when we are rejecting the promise then it is bubbling up to the main catch block on line number 17 to line number 19 here so people when they use a sync await with promises and they are starting out then they feel that they can use try catch everywhere so you have to understand that when you are uh, uh, returning a promise here from here then try catch are mainly for synchronous errors you return uh, so if it re rejects promise dot reject then it bubbles up to the nearest catch block of the uh, then chain but when you use a sync await then if you use a sync you add a sync and you you know add a wait here then you're making sure that this function second function fulfills here itself now if it's successfully resolved then it will go to the then block and if it rejects then it becomes synchronous code and it it is uh, go, it does go to the catch block so if i run it now so it is try catch something went wrong and then uh, a sync uh, wraps the output uh, returned value in a promise and we go to the then block so we get the end so you have to understand that when you are using try catch with promises api the earlier one then and catch and when you are using is a sync await then what does that mean and what kind of errors are going to bubble up to the uh, try catch and what kind of errors are going to bubble up to the catch block so in this example we have two functions we have first function and second function so in the first function we are calling the second function and uh, whatever is the output then either we are we are going to go to then or catch inside the second function we are returning a promise inside this promise we are now the question here is that is it going to resolve with one is it going to reject with a failed message is it going to resolve with two or uh, even if let's say if we resolve on line number five if it's worked then are these uh, reject resolve and console value, uh, statement are they even going to execute so what do you think would be the output so if i run this now 
then you see that the output here is after resolve and reject that means line number eight uh, is executed first and then the resolve happens uh, on line number five and we go to the then block and we are printing this so the, there are a couple of things to understand here first that resolve or reject is not the you know is not equivalent to return that if we return from any function if we let's say return from here then this this code is not reachable from line number five to line number ten that is not the same when you resolve if you resolve from a you know this pro callback uh, which you are passing to promise that doesn't mean that anything else or anything below that is not going to execute if you have to if you want to do that then you have to return resolve you have to return that value so if i do now then we are only getting one so that's one that resolve is not return now the second thing is that now if we are resolving here then we are rejecting and then we are resolving again so why is it we are getting the value one why we are not getting the second result that's it because you can only you can either resolve a promise or reject a promise and that too um, max one time you cannot you know resolve multiple times or you cannot reject the same promise multiple times if i remove or comment line number five then it is going to go to the catch block that this uh, this uh, line eight number is here called then it will go to the catch block if i remove this then it will resolve with the value two and uh, if I remove this, then the promise won't be getting resolved. And so these are the uh, two main learnings from this example. Then one, that resolve is not return, is not equivalent to return. If you want to stop the execution, then you have to return the value. Th this seems very basic. I mean, this is like, you. most of you must be thinking here that this is like uh, the common sense and uh, this is uh, basic stuff but uh, you would be surprised at how many people are making such mistakes out there uh, in the real world so first that resolve is not returned second you can only return the promise or reject a promise only once so this brings end to a video i hope uh, you were able to learn something from this video uh, i'm also learning on the job so if you feel i am i was wrong somewhere or you know i can update my knowledge then please do share your uh, opinion and your uh, uh, reasoning in the comments or reach out to me also you can try these uh, questions or you can try more programming questions on our platform devtools.tech and as always do like share and subscribe i'll see you next time okay take care bye bye